Hey YouTube, Mark Kaufman here, and today I am going to go over what it takes to polish up some Victorinox scales. Now, to be clear, the scales that I'm going to be polishing today are from the 1960s. Now, the scales that Victorinox made in the 1960s, I would have to say they are more brittle and they polish up quicker, I guess. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but they are definitely made out of a material that is more brittle and easier to crack than the Celador that they use now. Now, the Celador they use now probably has a little more plastic in it, and the older scales probably have a different compound in it. So when polishing these scales, you have to be very careful. And if you have a set of scales that are on a knife, I would probably advise to you, do not remove them. Just polish them on the knife like I am, because you risk cracking the anchors that are holding the scales onto the knife. So really quick, let's get into this thing. Okay, so let's get started with this restoration of these scales. I am also going to be polishing the blades and the tools, but I'm not going to show that in this video. So this is what the knife looks like currently. This knife dates back to probably the late 60s. It does not have the patent stamp on the can opener. So I'm going to have to gauge it to that time period. This knife itself is not in bad shape except we have a small scratch in the back end here and um, what you're going to need is maybe 200 or even 400 grit sandpaper i am using 400 grit and i find that to be enough to cut into the scale but not to remove a lot of the material itself for these next few steps all you need to do is use the weight of your hand. You don't need to press very deeply on these scales or even on modern scales, especially when you get around the shield. I didn't touch the shield in this video, but when you are sanding and polishing these scales, if you have to refinish the shield, if there's a scratch or a dent or anything like that, keep in mind the shield is about a millimeter thick. So all you really need is probably even a thousand grit sandpaper or even some steel wool on a sponge. That's about all you need. The polishing wheel is going to do all the work. But here I am primarily focusing on dents, scratches, and major damage points on the scale itself. On the corners of the scale, you do not need to put a lot of pressure. You also need to be mindful of where your tools and the aluminum liners are. You don't want to scratch those. When you are putting a lot of pressure on these scales, you run the risk of deforming them or making a deeper scratch that may remove too much material. It's always safer to remove less material than more material because you can never put the material back. Now I'm working on the show side. This side actually has a pretty deep scratch in it. It's right below the shield. And for me, I am going to use a little bit more pressure here. But what you need to do to be able to, I guess, prevent the possibility of this happening. But when you are putting a lot of pressure in one point, you're actually going to be kind of digging a hole. So you can see that scratch there in the middle of the scale. But when you're putting a lot of pressure in one point, you're going to be digging a hole in a way. Now, what you need to do is apply equal amounts of pressure to the other end of the scale as well. So I'm going to go towards the keychain end of the scale here and apply the same amount of pressure that I am on this scratch. That'll happen later in this video. But for me personally, that allows me to bypass the possibility of creating a hole where the scratch is because you do not want to have to end up with a valley in there. You want to keep it nice and flat. Now, at the very end of this video, I actually did end up with a very small little dent, I could say, 
but it was not too bad. It's not bad enough to be saying to myself, oh my gosh, I really screwed that up. But please be very careful when you are doing this because once you remove that material, you can never put it back. And this knife is quite valuable. So when you're doing this, be very careful. Don't apply too much pressure. Now that scratch has not gone away yet. Right here, and this, this is where I, start I am to starting to remove that scratch. Please be you very careful that when you're removing a lot deep more scratches on these scales or any, any other Torinox scale this knife handle. Especially but if I will it's probably be doing the same on the other like this, even if it doesn't look colored like scale. Be very careful doing this because once you remove that material, you can never put that stuff back, and you can also make the handle look very um, uneven when you actually get it completely polished out. Now here you can barely see that scratch now, and now I'm going to focus on to the other end of the scale. You wanna even out the possibility of having that, that deeper hole there and flatten the rest of the scale out. Make sure all the points are nice and flattened out and make sure there are no scraping points or dents or anything on the corners near the keychain or near the end of the blade because that's usually where these knives get dropped and they hit the floor and usually those have some dents. Now here I'm going to be starting on the blade and this really is going to be something that is going to take a lot of work. This actually took me about two hours of work to get it polished up and I did not go all the way with it. I did not make this knife absolutely perfect, primarily because the knife itself is not perfect. So it would look a little weird if the knife blade was absolutely pr pristine and then you have a knife handle that is not. So I wanted to keep it kind of equal on both ends of the spectrum. Now having something to create a flat surface against the knife blade definitely helps. I used an old ruler here and this just makes sure that when I am sanding this blade, I am keeping the blade side or the flats of the blade flat. If you don't use a flat sided object to do this, just be aware that you may end up with curved um, spines or a curved or a, a convex blade edge and sometimes it can take quite a few sharpenings to finally get rid of that convex on the edge. Now this is the outcome and you can see that the blade is still flat on the sides there and now we are going to go to polishing. Now polishing this 
knife handle, you do not need to use a lot of pressure also. Now these are cotton wheels that I'm using and I'm just using polishing compound here and it removes material quite quickly. You do want to make sure that you are hitting the sides, the corners, every nook and cranny of these handles, primarily because you want them to be shiny. This process is going to be repeated for all the tools and the blades, but you can see there I already have some progress made. So here is the knife after everything. So I do believe this looks substantially better than what we started with. I did not make it absolutely perfect. I was actually debating on working on a way to get rid of this crack here. And all of my ideas involved me having to take this scale off the knife. Either that or actually filing a cavity in here to fill it in. And for me, all of the compounds that I put together, the coloring just did not match this red. So for me, I ended up just leaving the crack there. I don't think it's going to diminish the value too much. Of course, if it was going down the middle or something like that, I probably would just replace the scale. But the front is where the money's at. So the original scales have a nickel silver shield here. In the video, I did go over this one spot quite heavily, and that was because there was just a deep gash there. Now, one of the things that you must do when you actually end up with that is equal treatment across the scale. If you go deep here, you've got to go deep back here a little bit, because if you don't, you will end up with a valley or a, um, a, a divot in the scale. Now, I didn't end up with too bad of one there. Um, it's really not that noticeable when you are looking at it. You can only see it in certain light, but you need to be very careful. If there's a very, very deep scratch, I probably wouldn't bother with it. But you can see here that these scales look substantially better. Now on the back here, not on the back, in the center here, I did polish up the blade. I did not make this absolutely perfect. Um, I was thinking about going out and getting 2000 grit sandpaper. But for me personally, I, um, I just didn't see that as really a step that I needed to take. This, this knife with the crack isn't perfect and it would look a little weird if the blade was absolutely perfect, no marks or anything on it, um, and then you have a crack in the scale. It just would look a little odd. So I left the blade with a few wear marks on it. Now, when it came to the other tools, I didn't really have to do anything to those. I just polished those up straight. And then for the back blade or the, the um, small pen blade, I, um, I just gave that a very light polish and I gave it a sharpen. So sharpened this up, did a rough grit. Um, Victorinox did a, a pretty rough grind on their uh, knives back in the day. So for me, I wanted to kind of match that. So I, I did the same thing. And then here's the can opener. Excuse the oil in there. And then I also polished the corkscrew. And I polished the reamer punch. So everything on this is in order. It's just, you've got to be very careful with these older scales. Um, they're definitely a, a, a beast into themselves, but I thought you guys would enjoy this video. And if you did, let me know in the comments. Till the next one, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.